part of my musical activities includes being curator of a instrument collection and uh, we've never had a good facility for cleaning out the instruments we have. We always end up taking them home to do it. It's not ideal so we decided to set up an instrument maintenance and flushing cleaning facility and uh, I studied a similar setup in the uh, shop of a uh, well-known brass instrument repairman that I use otherwise and uh, he's used a sheep uh, watering trough like you'd use on a ranch for watering sheep and I thought this was a good way to do it so this video is about how I went about making the one for my own use. So the specific uh, trough that I used is intended for watering sheep as I already said and it's a 70 gallon I believe it's polyethylene uh, molded watering trough. The manufacturer is apparently Balen, spelled B-E-H-L-E-N, country. And it's uh, also labeled Agramaster. And there's a model number of PRE216 associated with it. There's also a number 52110067. GS uh, associated with it depending where you look and uh, I think I may have already said it but it's a 70 gallon watering trough and I think the material is polyethylene I purchased this from the local farm and fleet store in my area uh, the price was roughly $100 and this thing weighs I don't know about 25 pounds perhaps it's not terribly heavy but it's really sturdy. When I got it home I put a garden hose into it and filled it up. I just wanted to make sure it wasn't defective in some way, you know, if it had a, a leak somewhere or something and I had it hold water for about a day and uh, verified its integrity. And then just for the heck of it I used my battery powered uh, pump to pump it out even though that took quite a while to do. It's not a very high flow rate on the pump. I designed a strong, stiff, sturdy table to hold this up at a good working height and uh, for a top I used a three-quarter inch flooring plywood. I bought a 4 by 8 sheet from the local Home Depot and I also planned out that I was going to need 11 2 by 4s each 8 foot long. Um, and the combination of the the plywood and the 2x4s and a few boxes of uh, deck screws in different lengths ended up costing about $120. I want the table to sit on some floor joists that are made up out of two 2x4s and also the legs of the table, which there will be six of them, are also made up out of two 2x4s two and uh, here's the first of the six legs put together with um, six deck screws holding the two uh, sections of 2x4 two together. Here's a side view of the same leg and I have it set up so the joists will uh, overlap one of the 2x4s but not the other one and so um, one 2x4 is a bit longer than the other. It's also notched out to have a cross piece going into it. So that's why the funny shape. Here the four legs for the corners have been made. And then the uh, two center legs which um, have boards sitting on top of them everywhere on the top edge so there is no part that goes all the way up. And here's just another view of the same six legs. I decided to provide a bigger shelf for the joists to sit on instead of just one 2x4 cross section. I wanted two 2x4 cross sections. That's both for weight holding and uh, or weight carrying and more places to put screws into. So I put these little stub sections of 2x4 at the top of uh, each of the six legs. The trough I'm using 
is roughly six feet long and roughly two feet wide and one foot deep uh, from the inside up to the top rim. But that uh, two foot by six foot dimension dictated the size of the tabletop. And here I've cut it out from the larger sheet using circular saw. And here are the three joists that will support the tabletop. Uh, the outer two are two boards wide and the middle one is three boards wide. Uh, all of them will sit with their ends resting on shelves notched into the uh, tops of the legs. Here's just a quick test fit of the joists resting on the legs. And here are detailed photos showing how the joists at one end sit on the legs and then the uh, center joist and then the uh, the third joist which is identical to the first one. Here I've used deck screws to just sort of tack it together briefly or not briefly but uh, just loosely uh, while I go around and um, make sure everything's chewed up in three dimensions with a carpenter's angle. I don't want anything to be off at a weird angle when I put in more screws. Now I have it on its side and I'm putting on the first of the uh, kick plate boards around the bottom. Uh, those are just there to help stabilize the bottom of the legs so they're not only sta uh, made rigid from the top end. It helps a lot with the stability. I also put a stabilizing board from front to rear between the bottoms of the two middle legs. I have now added front and rear belly boards which are just put on um, as a second layer to the front and rear top support boards just making them double thick but I can uh, have an overlap like layers of bricks this way which makes it more stable. In spite of all of that I decided to do something to prevent the table from tipping forward or backwards, um, stiffening it up by putting a piece of the leftover plywood uh, screwed to the middle legs and this way any tendency for the whole thing to go trapezoidal on me leaning forward or rearwards uh, would be arrested by that plywood piece. It's the same result I would get by putting diagonal pieces in. Uh, I was thinking I might want to put them on uh, something similarly going the long way, but because I'm not sure about the plumbing yet, I don't want to box it in too much. If it seems like I need stabilization in the long direction, I'll add that later. Okay, I double, triple checked my squareness in three dimensions, put in the extra screws on all the legs and joists, and then um, put the tabletop on and put that on with a lot more deck screws going into all the joists um, along the edges and across the middle. So it's a nice heavy solid bench now and I have full confidence that it'll hold that uh, trough very nicely. The trough will not be screwed down or anything. There's no way to do that without puncturing it. So instead I'm taking advantage of the three um, stiffening or stabilizing um, slots, grooves, corrugations, whatever you want to call it, that are on each of the long sides of the trough by putting in little um, little pieces of plywood here, um, or not plywood, but uh, two by fours screwed into the tabletop and terraced back a little bit to account for the way the sides slope outwards. And this way I can just set the trough down on top and it won't be able to slide around. But I can still lift the trough off easily enough if I need to. There's the finished product in all its glory. Everything came out just the way I wanted it to. I've also done a calculation on center of mass uh, for a fully filled tank and then uh, figured out the tipping point and calculated and then empirically verified the tipping angle uh, so I could mark it and 
it's kind of useless to do so, but it gives confidence to anybody who might be worried about filling up the tank and wondering if it might get tippy. I have to show them you'd have to tip it this far over before it would even have a chance of going over. I don't show that mark in this picture, though. There it is uh, filled up again on the table. Because my driveway slopes sideways, the water is not level in the trough at this point. There's a view of my tip angle marking. Another view of the filled tank on the table. This time to drain the tank I just used a siphon hose, uh, the kind with a little ball bearing valve at one end that you just shake a few times to get the water moving and then it siphons. I've got a piece of cinder block holding it in place so it doesn't fall out. 